Okay, so in this video, we will uh, review the application of the gravity model, which is the, uh, the model, one model that's used to distribute trips uh, between zones. Uh, it's the second step in the four-step process of travel forecasting. Uh, and so let's, uh, let's go. So the, the information that comes from the first step, which is trip generation, we have, let's say we have this three-zone metropolitan area. Okay, and uh, each zone, for each zone, we've estimated the number of trips that are produced from each zone, that is, the number of trips coming out of each zone, and we've estimated also, based on socioeconomic factors, uh, the number of trips that are attracted by each zone. Okay. We've also, also estimated, uh, by means that we'll see later on, uh, the travel times between zones. So to, to travel from zone one to zone two takes six minutes. Now we've also used these travel times to calibrate the gravity model. So we're applying the gravity model, we're not calibrating anything. So uh, the, 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 these friction factors are, are based on the travel times between zones. So the higher the travel time the higher the friction factor generally. Okay. Not necessarily, but it doesn't matter. This, this friction factor comes from the travel times and the K factors come from the need to adjust the, uh, the, the, the trip interchanges based on socioeconomic factors. Okay. So in the, the steps in the process of applying the gravity model are to adjust the A values, these, so that they add up to the p-values, right? So if we have a closed system, and we're assuming we have a closed system, just three zones, the number of trips produced needs to equal the number of trips attracted, right? So it needs to be consistent. We'll, we'll take a look at that, okay? The next thing we'll do is to apply the gravity model formula that I'll show you in a minute. Uh, to the P's and the A's, so we'll, we'll, we'll generate a, what's called a trip interchange matrix. So we'll know the number of trips from each zone to each of the other zones. Uh, and then we'll balance that resulting matrix because it doesn't come out balanced from the equation. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. So let's take the first step. Uh, we're going to adjust the A's from trip generation. We're adjusting the A's because typically we're more confident of the production values. We will we'll assume that those are more accurate. Okay, so the, uh, the sums are these and they should be equal. So what we want to do is make the A's add up to the P's. And uh, the easiest way to do that is to uh, apply a factor. So we want, we want to multiply these values, these A values, by a factor that will uh, add, make them add up to 1530. And the factor is 0.91. Okay. So A1 is 440 times 0.91 or 400 and so on. And if I add these new values up, they add up to, 16, or to uh, 1530. So this is the new trip interchange mate, or yeah, this is the new P and A uh, result from the from the uh, trip generation uh, phase. So now we can use these. We want to distribute these among the zones uh, using the gravity model. So here we have the the uh, the the, the uh, results from the trip generation phase. Number of productions from each zone number of attractions to each zone and we want to connect them up so this gravity model is one way of doing that and it basically the uh, TIJ is the number of trips made from zone I to zone J and it's equal it's said to be equal to basically the uh, the productions in I we're going to we're going to distribute them uh, in um, in proportion to the relative attractiveness of the destination zone. So relative attractiveness, how attractive is it? We can estimate that based on uh, the number of attractions. 
Uh, how attractive is it? How far away is it? Is it a you know is it a really long drive? That means it's less attractive, right? Uh, and um, we'll take the attractiveness of J and divide it by the total attractiveness of all of the zones, and in that way we'll have a factor that can can uh, give an give us an estimate of what proportion of the productions from zone I will go to zone J. So as an example, so let's say we want to know the trips that are made from zone 1 to zone 2. So the number of productions in 1 times this factor, and the factor to zone 2 is the uh, attractions into the uh, socioeconomic factor from 1 to 2 and the friction factor from 1 to 2 divided by this this whole all of the attractiveness from zone 1 to all of the zones. Now this is really a, a row uh, uh, value so we can calculate this this value and apply it three times. I'll show you what I mean. So for row number one from one to all of the other zones Row 1 is always the same. This denominator is always the same. Let's calculate it. A1 is 400. K1 1 is 1.04. F1 1 is 0.876. Plus A2 K1 2 F1 2. Plus A3 K1 3 F1 3. So A2 620 times K12 1.15 times F12 which is from 1 to 2 1.554 and same for the third one okay. so this 1731 is the denominator in this equation so from T for the trips from, from zone 1 to zone 2 are equal to the productions from 1 times the proportion of attractiveness in zone 2 to the total. And I can do the same thing over here for from 1 to 1. The attractions in 1 times K11, F11 divided by that same denominator and trips from 1 to 3 productions in 1 times the relative attractiveness of zone 3 for travelers from zone 1 okay. and when I take these values these three values T11, 1, 1, 2, and 1, 3 I come up with these numbers 116, 352, and 82. Remember those. Well, you don't have to remember those. I've recreated them here. But these go into a trip interchange matrix. So this is the trip interchange matrix. Zone from zone along the column and two zones along this first row. So from zone 1 to zone 1 is 116 from zone 1 to zone 2 is 352 and so on. These add up to 550. Okay. These add up to 600 and 380 and so on. However, if you look at the column, they don't add up. Now watch this. If I add these up, they add up to 447, not 400. Well, that's not right. These have to all add up, right? Everything has to be consistent. So I'm going to adjust these so that they do add up. So I want to get these, adjust these values in this column so that they add up to 400. So what I need to do is multiply them by a factor 400 divided by 447 will give me that factor. And I have a new set of values here that now add up. These add up to 400. 
Now, you may anticipate the problem. The problem here is, while well, I've adjusted them for the columns, what about the, the rows again? These don't add up to 550. Oh, by the way, yeah, 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 okay. So 103 is 116 times the, the factor. 116 times the column factor gives me the new value. Similarly, 257 times 0 0.89 gives me 229 and so on. These add up to 400. The rows don't. These now add up to different values. They're not, they're not what they're supposed to be. So we have to adjust them with a row factor. So the row factor, we want to increase these numbers, right? Five. Okay, uh, for some reason, um, the, uh, the software that I'm using to, to um, um, record this uh, left some stuff out. So the last slide I'm going to review once again. Okay, so we're going to balance the tra trip interchanges. Uh, we did, the, uh, we, we did the, the columns already. You'll remember this is the, from the gravity model. These are the trip interchanges, and they add up row-wise, but they don't add up column-wise. So I had to use a factor, right? I had to adjust these column values by a, a factor so that they would add up to the attractions. So the factors are calculated... Uh, by dividing the uh, the uh, the actual uh, by the uh, calculated, uh, so because this this actual value is less than the calculated value, so this factor should be less than one, right? So um, here's the adjusted values, and as you can see, for example, uh, the trips from one to one was 116. Now I've adjusted them by this column factor, uh, so it's 103 now. And each of these, you can, you'll can you be able to see if you do the calculation, 257 times 0 0.89 will be 229. 142 times 0.94 will be 133, and so on. Now these columns add up. But the problem is, now that these add up, the, the rows don't add up. These rows add up to, for example, this first row is 533. So I need to make that adjustment with a row factor. Okay? And once I do that, once I multiply each of these entries by the row factor, 550 divided by 533, 380 divided by 398, for example, will result in these new values in the table, they're, they're a lot closer than the first iteration. Uh, for example, 331 times the row factor of 1.03 is 341. And if I add those up in both directions, they add up pretty close, within a percent. 